Hello everyone and welcome to my second Affinity Designer tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a superhero arc reactor design. Uh, if you watched my first tutorial, we did a Captain America shield and uh, I figured we'd keep with the superhero theme and do the arc reactor from Iron Man's chest. Uh, so this tutorial compared to this one, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of the same things. It's just going to be more intense. Uh, if you followed along with this one, hopefully you learned some stuff and uh, you're ready for this one. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a little bit more labor intensive, but it's still, it's still a beginner tutorial, even though it's intense. So uh, this one ran about 50 minutes. This one's going to be a lot longer, so this video is going to most likely be a, um, uh, a minimum of a two-part video. So, just like we did with the Captain America shield, uh, let me just show you a brief overview, and we're just going to get right into it and just start uh, doing this. I'm going to show you how to use uh, symbols. Um, you can use symbols to make one item, repeat it, and then... Uh, let's say you want to go in, let's just say we wanted all these to be green for whatever reason. And now let's zoom out and they all turn green. So, uh, symbols are going to be something that you're going to learn. Uh, and other than that, we're just, we're going to go through, I'm going to, I got some tricks, tips and tricks for you. And I think if you like the Captain America shield one, we're just going to keep, uh, it's going to just keep getting better. So let's just start with a new, new document. Uh, we're actually going to do 3.5 by two inches. And this is going to give us a uh, business card like size. And that's kind of the theme of, uh, these, this tutorial series is like if, uh, superheroes had business cards. So, uh, and we're just going to kind of focus in on specific items and make them look as good as we can. Uh, let's shut this one down. Um, okay, so let's just get right into this. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to get some uh, um, some reference here. I'm just dragging and dropping uh, a picture. If you just go to Google and type in uh, Iron Man Arc Reactor, St Tony Stark Arc Reactor movie, something along the lines of that. Uh, this this will pop right up for you. Uh, so let's kind of make this. Oops. Okay. Let's. I'm gonna try to size this so it's kind of about the size we want to make, and then. What I'm going to do is make another layer and I'm just going to put like a black box by it or a lighter. Uh, we'll make it black. Just so we can work side to side. And then I'm going to lock this. Uh, I'm going to group these. Command G. And we will lock the background. Okay, so let's get started. Um, to get started here, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're just going to keep kind of making all the rings we need for this. Uh, this is on a little bit of an angle to his chest. See how we can kind of see more of the bottom than the top. Uh, we're just going to flatten this out when we do it over here. And um, we're not going to do that angle to it. And then, of course, we're going to put him in his suit instead of drawing his chest. Okay, so we start with the ellipse tool. Let's do a fill. Let's do like a silver and gray. Drag this out. And let's set this right about there. Looks good. Okay, uh, we're just going to kind of eyeball this, and this is going to be the outer ring here. Now we need this ring. 
So we're going to command J to duplicate it. That's going to duplicate it in here. Uh, just so we can see what we're doing, we're going to make this ring kind of approximately the color we're thinking here. And we're going to hold shift, shrink this down to kind of what we think is going to look right. Just want a real short lip on that. Okay, uh, last time I showed you how to line these up by selecting both of these and then hitting uh, align vertically and horizontally. And then now we know it's directly in the middle. Uh, what you can also do is go up here to the magnet, which is snapping and um, it's going to snap right to the center. So that's going to save us a little bit of time here. That was something I just skipped out on last time. I wasn't paying attention. I definitely should have uh, mentioned that last time. So we're going to keep going. Uh, we got this one, this one. Now we're going to get in and kind of get our big blue one. So command J again. Uh, we're going to kind of go with a blue color. All these colors we're gonna go through and readjust. So this one, I'm kind of thinking about here. We got our auto center on. Snap to grids. Uh, that looks close, maybe just a tad smaller. And then yeah, make sure you're lining it up with the right. Um, this is lining with the other one. Just Just make sure you're snapping it to the right grid. Okay, uh, we got that. Uh, we're going to ignore this little blue ring for one second. We're going to put that in in one of the later steps. We're going to go to this ring right here. Again, Command J. We're going to go to, um, you know, let's just make this the same color as that. We're going to grab the eyedropper tool and uh, we're going to select this. Select that to make it that. And... Uh, looks about there looks right and again we can adjust this once we start getting all the pieces together um, we can play around with this more and really adjust this more see and I actually that time there I almost snapped it to the wrong grid so you got to make sure you pay attention when this is on and if you, of course, if you want to double check, you can reselect the circle under it and do it this way with the align. Okay. Um, what we're going to do here, instead of layering this next one up, is I'm going to show you how to cut it right out so we can actually extrude one shape out of the other. So we're going to do that. One more time, kind of figure out how big we want this. That looks about right, maybe just a little bit. Okay, so what we want to do is actually take this piece and cut the hole out using this piece. In order to do that, we're going to want to you're going to want to play with these up here because the thing is about this is they do get a little confusing sometimes but if you click through a couple uh, you'll usually be able to do what you want it's going to be a combination of of these and you will get used to uh, you will get used to how this works but it gets a little tricky at times because it, it matters which order you select these and then combinations of this so you got three factors going on um, okay so we want to do this and divide it so what that did was that gave us this circle 
and it, it went right in and just chopped the other one out so we can see right through it that vector circle is no more part of this. Um, I can go in and it, it really it took it out and put the vector in it. So that's what that did. And these this is powerful once you get into more complex designs. You're going to really need to uh, kind of like boolean out that uh, that vector information sometimes otherwise you're just gonna have way too many layers and stuff's just not gonna look right so now we're gonna go under this because this is gonna be the top layer if I were to put a uh, another this blue one oops Okay, so if I were to put this blue one, this has got like a little bit darker blue here. Uh, we're gonna do something like that for the middle. So if I were to try to line it up, that would be silly. So what we're gonna do is drop it under. And then there we go, we got the exact, you know, what we're looking for. Um, so make sure we keep this one on top. Uh, let me look at this because I think that's it for that. And then I think, yeah. Okay, so that's it for our ellipses. We have all the levels we need. Okay, so now what I want to do is we're going to start making these little... Um, clips here that hook to the side of his arc reactor and in order to do that I'm going to show you how symbols work symbols as I kind of went over in the the beginning they're just you make one and then you can keep changing it and it's going to keep updating it over all of the duplicates that you duplicated to go in and draw out every one of these would just be crazy time consuming. So uh, we're just going to go in, we're, we're going to go in, do one, repeat it. And then the more we tweak it, we'll just keep tweaking it and it'll just keep looking better and better. So in order to do that, um, let's, let's make these on a new layer. And uh, let's call this main clip because what's going to happen is once we start duplicating it, uh, we're going to need to go back to the main one to change. Actually, let me double check that here. So if we selected... Let's say we select this one down here and we go in and uh, we make these pink. Oh, I take that back. Okay, I totally take that back. Any of them that you do, they're all going to update because we're duplicating that same shape. So, okay, but this will still be our main one that we use to create the symbol. So first we got to draw it out. Uh, we're going to go over here and just, we're just going to trace it off this so we get our proportions right. Um, now, in our pen tool, there's a couple modes that I want to go over real quick. And this mode here, which is just the normal pen mode, is the normal pen mode if you're coming from Illustrator, a, lo a lot of applications use this pen mode if you've done vector before you're going to be used to it if i do a click like that it's going to be a straight line if i click here and i start to pull i get the bezier tools um or bezi i'm sorry bezier handles and you should if you've ever worked in vector you should know how this works so we're not going to use that for this we're going to use smart mode smart mode is not it's i mean there's other applications that have it but uh affinity's one of my favorite um uses of it 
So what it's going to do is it's, it is what it says. It's smart mode. It's going to kind of like take the average of what you're doing and like try to figure out where you're going. And then you can, it's still going to put the Bezier handles in there for you, but it guesses way better than normal pen mode. And then you can just go in and adjust and, um, it just makes it a lot quicker to do. So as you can see, we're just clicking around it and it just makes it a super quick trace. And then once you finally close it off, it kind of gives it a little bit more. So uh, let's get rid of the fill and let's get a weight on this stroke so we can see it. And then we're going to go in with the uh, node tool and we're just going to touch it up here. Okay. So mainly right here, uh, this is straight, uh, flat instead of going like this and snapping it in, which as you can see, you know, just takes a little bit of time here. Um, we're going to go in and we're going to, we're going to click both these and we're going to hit this, which is going to convert it to a straight uh, line there. Okay. Now we're going to go in. We're just going to make sure that this is the shape we want and that it's even. We're going to touch it up a tad. So basically we just kind of want to make sure that these are about the right height and that this is approximately the right height and that these are straight across and that looks about right. I'm going up a little bit ahead cause we're going to do a uh, drop shadow for that. Um, okay. And let's fill it with a silver. We're going to kind of go with the dark gray. That seems like it matches. Um, okay. Now we're going to make a new layer. Uh, oops, let me drop that down here. Okay. Uh, now we're going to make all these little notches here. And uh, basically it seems like these two outside ones are a little bit bigger. And then there's uh, what do you got? one, two, three, four in the middle. So a total of six. Um, I'm using the uh, this tool right here, the rounded edges. And I'm just going to kind of go in. And it looks like a little bit of space goes down let's do this to make sure let's go to this layer and just drop its opacity just to kind of make sure we're getting the right length here and that one pops up it seems like the ones on the edge kind of pop up just a tad higher um, I'm gonna hold the alt key and the shift key kind of do that and then I'm gonna hold the alt and the shift key again Bring it here and I'm going to do these a little bit smaller. And then as you can see our uh, tool here is helping us align these. Uh, okay, so now we got to just kind of figure out we need four and we got to kind of figure out the size of them. So I'm going to make four. Hold shift alt as I'm making them. I'm going to select those four that we just made. And we are going to size them like so. And again, like so. And I'm even going to bring them in a little. Go back to here and we're going to turn the opacity up and there we go. Okay. And we're going to grab this and we're going to bring this over and yeah, it looks like we had our proportions pretty good. It looks like it kind of clips on just how I want it to. So. Now I'm going to show you the symbols. Um, we're going to select this. 
and how come that's not selected? Okay, we're gonna make sure we're on the main chip layer and we're gonna create a symbol. Okay, so it was that simple. Um, this is now a symbol. So we're gonna duplicate this around and um, it'll do, you know, then we can go in and update this how we want and they're all gonna update. So let me show you how we're gonna duplicate this. Okay, so obviously we don't wanna just, you know, go around you know, th this is going to take forever if we try to do something like this. And as you can already see, it's just a pain. So let me undo that and let me show you what we want to do here. Um, okay. This right here is going to be, it's show the rotation of the center. So we want to click that to turn that on. When we click that, we get this little thing right here. Okay. This is the anchor point. Um, when you rotate, it rotates around that anchor point. And, uh, okay, so we just got one here. Um, so for instance, if I were to drag that anchor point here, that will be the rotation. So obviously what we wanna do in this scenario is drag this to the middle. And now that's gonna be our rotation point for rotating it around. Um, because we have so many circles here, we do, you really want to make sure you get the right, uh, the right middle here, which it looks like we're good. Um, the align doesn't quite work with this. You are going to have to use the snapping tool, um, to get this. So, okay. Okay. So we have our main chip selected. What we're going to do is duplicate it by hitting Command J. We got our second one. Uh, now that we have the anchor point here, we're going to hold Shift and do a 45 degree turn on it, rotation on it. Um, by doing that, Affinity now kind of knows what I'm going to do. So when I go and hit Command J again, it's going to not only duplicate the shape, but it's gonna duplicate the rotation that we did to this. So now that we got this set up right, um, we can just go all the way around and just hitting Command J. And you can do it one more time just to make sure. And yeah, it lines up dead on, Command Z. And unselect that, and there we go. Now we have all of our our little arc reactor clips holding the arc reactor in. Okay, so now we want to do all these little uh, lights around the edge and then all the ones in the center. Uh, so basically it's going to be the same process that we did for this. They're just going to go around. It's just a lot more. So we got to be a little more precise in how we lay them out. And uh, let's do that now. So I want to come over here and just use the uh, the pill ellipse and just kind of go in. Okay, so what we want to do here is I wanna just get these edges out a little bit more, but you'll see when we go into the node tool, um, it doesn't let us select these that way, how we were used to when we draw the path out. The reason for that is because this is a shape, not a like curves path. So what we wanna do is we wanna right click on it and we wanna convert it to curves. And now that it's curves, we can go in and do just that. So. All I want to do is just give it a very slight nudge on each side. Just kind of eyeball that up. Kind of get it right there. Okay. Now, 
that we got this. Let's take this and bring it over here. And okay, so what's going on here is uh, we accidentally made that when I made a new layer, we made it inside of the symbol, which then duplicated it to all the symbols. And you're probably thinking, oh, cool, we can quickly do this but that's actually not what we want to do because it's going to get weird if we do that that way and and we want the tops of these to lay underneath this so let's take this get it on its own layer and uh, let's take all of these clips and we're going to select them all and we're going to do command g to group them into their own layer okay Okay, now we got this one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go around and duplicate them first. We wanna make sure we get our center point set up here. And just, you know, make sure you're getting it in the center center, not, you know, this center. Make sure that our, our anchor point is in the correct center. Um, now, what I wanna do I think we got to do. I think we got to do two curves here to kind of get it, or I'm sorry, two symbols. Well, let me try something here to see if this is gonna work. Um, okay, so if I create a symbol out of that, Command J, uh, we're gonna duplicate it. Ooh, but now our. Oh, I'm sorry. I duplicated it within the wrong. Oops. Oh, okay. Uh, I duplicated it. Now I want to move it. Oh, I was holding shift. Uh, so it looks like we want about 10 degrees on that. Um, oh, did I undo that symbol too? Okay, so we got two symbols. This second one, the only thing I want different is I want it to be the lighter blue. And then let's try this. Let's select them both. Ah. Okay. So now that we got them both selected, we're going to have to reset this uh, center point. So again, we still want it to be dead center in the middle. Or actually, let's just group this. Let's group this first and reset this just so. And just triple check that you got that in the right center. Okay, now we're gonna duplicate this, rotate it, 20. Okay, so we're good, because it was 10 and 20. And we're just gonna keep duplicating this around. And there we go. Uh, so of course, this last one didn't line up right for us. So what we're going to do about that is select them all, I think, you know what, I think it was that point one that killed us. I think we're going to go, let's undo this, and when we move this, Let's really get in there. Let's really get in there, make sure we just get it right on the line here. Now we'll start. And now we're too short. Okay, so as you can see, we're having some fun. 
with lining this up, which is going to be just how this kind of stuff works. Your graphic designer, this should be nothing new to you. And of course, there we go. Exactly 20. Okay, so now that we got 20. Oh, come on. Okay. If this happens, you can just keep resetting it. So let's do, let's do a J. Okay. It did work that time. If it didn't just keep bringing it back in and it'll, it'll reset itself. There we go. Okay. So it gets a little trickier when we have so many of these, but you just got to pay attention to what's going on. And now that we did it that way and we used our symbols, um, let's drop this into another group and we want this to be below this. Um, now that we have our symbols, we can uh, change color and, you know, do stuff like that and it'll one will update the other. So if we wanted to make this one bright white, we could do that. So what else I want to do is this. Now that we got this laid out, uh, see how there's these little gaps right here and see how they don't, they're a little bit higher up. So Let's find our first one. So the first group is going to be on the bottom. I want this one right here. And we're going to zoom in. Uh, let's actually select them both because I want them both to. Uh, I take that back. I do not want to do that. We just want to raise each one up a little bit. And why is it not updating all of them? Okay, so I didn't realize size is not something, size is not a factor of the the uh, symbol, they're size independent. So it's going to do things like stroke and color and stuff like that. But if you size one down, it's not going to resize the other one. So what we want to do is go to our light group and uh, I'm just going to make the whole thing like a little bit bigger. Okay. And I like that better. Um, okay. So now that we got these done, um, before we get into this middle part, I know it's getting boring with just doing a lot of this stuff. Let's just do some quick, quick shading. And uh, I'm sorry, let's do some texturing real quick. And then we're going to wrap this video up and uh, we'll, we'll continue in the next video. And I think we can finish this up in two videos, possibly. So... What I want to do is this. First, let's select one of these clips. Let's select the main clip. And let's first uh, go through and we want to give it an effect. We want to bevel and emboss this a little bit. Okay, so we want to bevel the direction to be like kind of in the middle just a little off to the side. Um, we want it to be right about there. You just kind of line it up. We actually want a 
Yeah, you know, we actually want the inner. Okay, so we want an inner for the type. And just kind of get your radius to something you like. Go ahead and soften it a little bit if you want. And we're going to go through. I'm going to do that to all of these as well. These are going to be a lot less. And uh, we're going to go through the stroke next and get this stroke right. Uh, this direction we can kind of leave up there because it'll give them all like a little bit different of a look. Okay, next what I want to do is get the stroke for this main curve better. Okay, so click on your stroke and I just want to do a pressure to it so it's not so uniformed. Um, this is the end points. This is the center. I kind of went over this a little bit in the other, the Captain America one. So I want something just a little bit, a little bit not so uniform. It doesn't have to be just something like a little curve like that is going to just help make it so it doesn't look so, you know, squared out. Um, and then we're going to do that for these as well. And I mean, you could look as you're doing this, you'll kind of see where the, like where it's, it's doing it. So I'm kind of just going to do a little point like this. That way we get a little darker or thicker on the bottom. And voila. Okay, let's do a um, a little quick gradient on this. Uh, same thing, if you watch the Captain America one, you will know that uh, you can select this. You can go to fill and, uh, oops, I'm not on the, you can go to fill and use a gradient, but you can also take the gradient tool and drag and drop on it. And we are going to just do a little dark gray to gray. And I actually even want that a little light darker. And then maybe let's put a little point right here. Okay, just a tad darker. And then this edge, maybe we actually do lighten this edge up a little bit, but kind of bring the um, middle down a little bit just so it doesn't look so, so dead on. Okay, these clips are starting to look good. Let's do basically the same thing to this. We're gonna Click the FX button. We're going to do a bevel and emboss. Uh, this one we actually might want to do. We, this one we are going to do a pillow emboss to this. And it actually almost looks like the radius kind of looks good. I kind of like what's going on here. Okay. Um, now what I want to do to get this like shadow going and it also kind of gives the effect here is um, uh, we're going to do a outer shadow. So we click on the outer shadow. We're going to do the radius. I'm sorry, we want to do the offset. Uh, what's going on here? How come I can't see? Let's do normal. Oh, okay, I guess I had to do it a lot more than I thought. Okay, so 
we want to pull the offset down and that's going to go on this angle I want it a little more kind of like about there and I do want the radius I want it to blur out just a little bit but I don't want it too crazy and I'm actually going to bring that in just a tad so um, you might be used to in Photoshop doing a drop shadow it is in um, or in Illustrator or drop shadow it is called an outer shadow in Affinity and it actually took me a little while I didn't think you could do drop shadows in Affinity and then I just realized they were calling it uh, an outer shadow um, okay and as far as the this here okay so we can do two more things really quick to wrap this video up um, we're gonna do texture so uh, let me just see if I did texture on okay so I did do texture on that okay so uh, just like we did in the Captain America one I'm actually gonna use the same one from Captain America for the outer edge of this ring and then I have another texture basically you're just gonna to want to find a metal texture on Google um, and bring it in and we're gonna multiply it down or I believe we might have done a uh, overlay on it okay there we want to find the center and uh, depending on how your taste is you know either you know how many how, how tight you want that those circles to be and of course I have to line this up uh, in this instance it seems like the uh, it seems like the snapping is kind of not letting me put it exactly where I want and I'm going to show you another trick uh, we're on the back layer of this uh, I'm just going to bring this right up to the very very top of our um, document here I'm going to turn this off for one sec and I'm just going to eyeball how I want this and I want it right about there is where I want it okay so now we got to mask this out okay so we want it here but we don't want it overlapping into this uh, again, we went over this in the Captain America Shield video. Uh, I want to make a mask for this. So this is going to be the mask. I'm going to want to put this on top of it, and I'm going to want to select Mask to Below because I want this shape to mask to this underneath. So Mask to Below, and now you have the texture on only this and not anywhere else. Okay, let's add one more uh, texture here to, this one's a little different, I don't need to um, line it up, but it's going to go right over top of this, same thing, we're going to want to come in and do an overlay, and then we're going to want to scale it down quite a bit. And just kind of get it you just want to get the grain to look about right I think that's about right maybe a little smaller here we just want our metal to have some grain on it um, we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna duplicate this we're gonna put it on top because Oh, uh, where'd that go? I messed that up. We're going to put it on top, and then we're going to mask two below because I want to make a mask of that. And there we go. Okay. 
So let's do that to this as well. And then we're going to wrap this video up and we're going to come in and finish it in the next video. So let me drag. Uh, and I guess we can go to any clip or I'm sorry. Yep. We can go to any clip. I want this. Let me see if I put it over top. No, it appears. Okay, so I didn't put a texture on those. It is on the bottom. Um, again, it's a very large image we're working with. Okay, so that might be a little tricky to do. Maybe we should have done this ahead of time. But actually, that looks about right right there. That doesn't look too grainy. Something like that's fine. Uh, duplicate it, bring it above, and how come that's. There we go. We want it right over there. And mask it to below. Okay, now they all have their own separate things. Okay, this is a good spot to stop. Um, we've gone a long way, and uh, next time we're going to finish this up. Uh, but I will say this. The the repetitive stuff is out of the way. Um, we got to do that centerpiece. But other than that, uh, the next part should go a lot quicker. And, uh, again, I got some more tips and tricks. So... Come on back to the next one and I hope you enjoyed this video.